One of the great new features in the Indigo release is the ability to do tags in a hierarchical way. So tags, of course, are on a summary screen. We go to the Tags tab, and here we have the tags that I already have assigned. But now I'm going to show you how we can create hierarchical tags. We go to Configuration over here, and we go to Tags, which is under the Contacts section. And here you see that we have Volunteer and then Shelter. And by that, what I mean is we have a tag of people who have identified as volunteers, and then those who've said, I want to volunteer at the shelter, or I want to volunteer on site at people's homes. So we currently have volunteer and shelter, which is the child category to volunteer. Let's go ahead and create a new one called on site in home. We create new, we're gonna call this on site in home. Now we apply it to the parent, which is volunteer. You can see that shelter is already considered a level two. And we can go down to level three to really get granular with our ability to do segmentations. But we're going to go ahead with volunteer, select, we'll create. And now you see that we have volunteer, volunteer in shelter, or volunteer on site in home. And we'll see it directly under the contact summary options. Now we'll go ahead and select available tags, volunteer, and now our level two is we have on site, in home, and shelter. So I go ahead and click add, and there we have on site, in home as a tag. One of the great new features you'll see in the Indigo release is the ability to create custom reports directly in the listings page in any module. So for instance, in the contacts search and manage listings, we're gonna create a report right here of people who have the tag of visited presidential library. And then we only want a group of up to a certain date in 2015. So let's say created up to June of 2015, January 2015, January 1, and this will be everybody who is created up to that point with this tag. We go ahead and click apply, now we, here we have our report and listings that we had, which is advanced of the dates they were created to up to 2015 and a tag of visited presidential library. So we're actually gonna to wanna to print this out or export it somehow, but we're gonna to wanna to utilize specific columns as well. So we're gonna to go to the gears in the top right, the three gears, which is our save, search, and export settings. And we'll call this visited presidential library prior to 2015. Okay, and we're going to want to include in our columns the contact ID, the individual's, individual's full name, their type, their status, address one, address two, address city, address state, and zip code. So that probably gives you a pretty good indication. Now we're going to go ahead and save the settings or save settings and export now. We're going to export this list. We download our file, and now we see our report right here, which has our contact ID, name, type, status, so forth, just like we requested. So it's a great way to build out the reports you need really fast uh, without going into the query tool. This is the first step in what we see as part of our move towards really improving the ability to generate and create your own reports and exports directly from the uh, listing section. A major revamp in peer-to-peer -peer is our integrated workflow with a step indicator wizard like on this sign-up page. Our client services team can help you implement any workflow configuration you want for a seamless, fully integrated experience. Here's a sample workflow for creating a DIY fundraising event. In step one, we select the event type that we're creating. As you can see, we can assign pricing in this step two. Again, this entire workflow is custom configurable. This is just a sample. 
Next, we go to gathering event details like the name, start and end date, and a brief event description. In this step, we create the account. Notice we don't need to wait for an email link. It goes right to the next step, which is providing the event creator's contact information. Here we can add some custom questions that will be part of the event profile. You can ask any questions you want and retain and use that data. This takes us to our payment page. One of the benefits you can see here is that we don't require a CVV number, a step that sometimes causes form abandonment. Notice that the $10 registration fee from step one is applied automatically. You can also offer promo codes and discounts during this part of the process. After registering, we give the participant various options for how they might fundraise. This sends them to the section for setting up their own fundraising page. And in the last step, we give them a chance to kickstart their own fundraising. And with that, they arrive at their dashboard with full control of their fundraising presentation and donation management. So again, this is just a sample of our full configuration. Another new feature in Charity Engine's Peer-to-Peer -peer is the ability to upload contacts into your address book from a CSV file. We already had create a single entry, but now you do an upload just like importing any other file. In one thing to keep in mind, it must be CSV, and also you have to follow the file format here, a first name, middle name, last name, and email address with no column headers. Once you're set up that way, click import, and you're ready to go. The final feature you'll see here is the ability to not only create entries into the address book in a one-on-one -on -one basis, but the ability to delete them. Deleting them did not exist before. So let's take a quick look at how you can create an entry. We go to create entry. Okay. And then we go to save. And now we see that George Washington is an entry in our address book. To delete it, we simply go to the delete button. Okay. And he was successfully deleted. 